Welcome to our 50th episode of CleaningBiz.TV. I'm always amazed when I'm out at different industry events how many people approach me to let me know that they've watched every episode. I'd like to thank you for watching and remind you that if you're not getting the notices of new episodes to be sure and fill out the form at the top of the page at CleaningBiz.TV. This week I'd like to share a clip of a presentation I did at a conference for building service contractors. The topic was creating happy clients through well-trained employees. At the end of the conference, some of the attendees commented that their biggest takeaway was a section of my presentation that talked about reacting versus responding. Today's episode is a clip from that presentation. So, what I'm going to talk to you today about is how to create happy customers through well-trained employees. Now what this presentation is not, I'm not going to be talking to you about how to train your employees on how to clean. Okay, you guys are already doing that and Todd's giving you some great resources for doing that. But what I want to talk to you about is how to start incorporating customer service training into your business so that you can have happy, satisfied customers. We've already talked a lot about having satisfied customers. This is one great way to do that. So let's, um, just to kind of drive home the importance of why customer service training is so important these days. Let's say that you've got a proposal that you're submitting to a prospect and you're up against two competitors. Well, you guys have always heard this as business owners that you need to differentiate your company from your competitors, right? It's very difficult to figure out what makes you different from your competitors. We're all in the cleaning business kind of doing the same thing, right? So let's say you've got one competitor bid 1100 a month, another competitor bid 1150 a month, and you bid 1200 so you're the high one on the list. So they're taking a look at the three bids, or proposals, sorry, Dick. <laughs> um, they're looking at the three proposals, and they're like, okay, we've got, they're pretty much in the same price range, so that's not too bad. Seems like they provide pretty much the same service, so how am I going to choose which one to go with? Well, guess what they're going to do? They're going to go with the 1100 a month because they're going to save a few bucks, right? So what if they decide to start calling references, call up your clients, and find out why they do business with you? And when they call your company's clients, they find out that the reason they like to do business with you is because of the way they're treated. I love their employees. They're always so happy, and they take care of me. Every time I give them a call, they're just Johnny on the spot with taking care of me. When they start hearing those kinds of things, is that 1200 versus 1100 a month all that important to them? Not really. I mean, they're they're going to think for another hundred dollars a month, I'm used to having cleaning companies that you know I've already been through two or three of them, so it's kind of worth it, isn't it? So that's one of the reasons this is so important. Now, as you start rolling some of these things out to your employees, you may get a little pushback from them because in their mind, especially your cleaning technicians, because we're including your office people, this is a company-wide thing, but your cleaning technicians are thinking, well, I work at night, I see employees working once in a while, but I really don't talk to them much, I don't have much interaction, why do I need to know this stuff? Well, what about the fact that lately there's a trend towards day cleaning, and if you're going to have people in the buildings, especially during the day, they're going to be interacting with people all the time and you need them to represent your company the way you want them to represent your company, right? You don't need them saying the wrong things. <coughs> and with the way the economy has been lately, I think that there's probably more people working late at night because people have been laid off and lost their jobs, but there's still people out there and there's still a lot of work to be done and the people that are working are picking up the slack and probably working late. <laughs> so I think your people are probably seeing more late workers and so and even if they don't have a lot of interaction they still have some and they need to know how to handle the situation so I believe that this is really an important topic that we need to talk about it's not the situation but whether you react or respond to the situation that's important this is a quote from Zig Ziglar and in parentheses you'll notice reacting tends to have a negative connotation to it responding is a little bit more positive, right? So why is this so important? Because your employees have a choice when they're in a situation with a customer, to wh whether they want to react or respond. Let me give you an example. 
let's say you've got your clean technician, he's pushing his group, gathering the trash for the night. All of a sudden, an employee that's working late in the building approaches him and says, I put all these boxes up against the wall here last night to be picked up and thrown out in the trash. Why are they still sitting there? And they're a little peeved off about it, and that's how they say it to your employee. Well, now, this is where your employee has a choice. Are they going to react or are they going to respond? So can somebody give me an example of what would be a reaction, how they could react to this in a negative way? That's not my job. <laughs> <laughs> That's not my job. You didn't write trash on it. Well, nobody had wrote, written trash on it, so I didn't take it out. And it's partly the tone of voice that they use with that too. Because they were approached in a kind of you know negative way or they were confronted a little bit by that employee, they, if they get on the defensive, they're gonna react and they're gonna put it right back in their face. Now, they're probably gonna go ahead and take the trash out right now and do what needs to be done. But how does that employee feel when they leave the situation? Not that great. So who could give me an example of a better way to respond to that situation? Anyone? I'm sorry, I'll get those. I'll get those for you. And in the future, if you would, just please write trash on so we don't write. Exactly. So he said, I'm sorry, I'll take care of that for you. In the future, just write trash on so we know. Okay, so apologizing sincerely, first of all, we need to train our employees to apologize sincerely. I'm so sorry. You know what? I did see the boxes last night, but they weren't marked trash. And I would hate to throw out boxes that don't belong in the trash. That would be a disaster. But tell you what, have you guys ever seen those stickers that are marked trash, not trash? If you supply your employees with those, your employee could say, I'll tell you what, let me give you some of these stickers, and the next time you have boxes that need to be thrown out, just mark them, and if they're, they're trash, I'll know immediately to take those out and problem solve. So what else did that do for that employee in that building? It solved the problem, because they may walk away thinking, oh, the next time I put boxes out, they're not gonna take them out then either. So if your employee can not only be polite, but come up with, and also take care of the problem right away, but then come up with that solution, well, now how does that employee walk away feeling? They feel pretty good, don't they? That's it for today's show. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic, so go ahead and post your comments below the video. Also, be sure to look for more information on how you can see the webinar version of this presentation, as well as the customer service training program now available for commercial cleaning companies. I'm Jean Hansen, and you can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Just look for the links at cleaningbiz.tv. See you next time.